What's up guys, this is Max from HardwareHobbyist.com and this is going to be the 8th video in the unboxing um, section of our custom PC building guide. I'm refilming this um, because the first one we did was pretty incoherent and way too long so I'm going to try to make this more concise and um, more helpful to those of you who are looking um, to it as a guide for how to buy RAM for your custom PC. So I'm just going to quickly show off um, the RAM we have here and um, specifications that are common to all uh, types of RAM. So <clears throat> these are Mushkin Redlines. Mushkin's a great company. I've dealt with their customer um, support and um, really easy to work with and nice too. And um, their products have been pretty solid for me so far. I would recommend them. And um, all right, so let's look at specifications for RAM. There's basically four main ones you want to look at. First you have your frequency that is going to be the speed that the RAM runs at. Basically um, how fast it can process commands. Um, much like the frequency that a CPU runs at, the gigahertz amount. Um, basically the same for RAM, the faster the better. Second is your timings. Um, these are essentially how fast the RAM can access a block of memory given a specific scenario depending on like where you want to access it from things like that a well threaded um, or not well threaded but a well programmed application um, will not uh, take advantage of load timing so much because it's going to be like the data will be all in a row and the memory won't have to jump around so much but if you're using a poorly programmed application then low timings can help you but generally Go for frequency first and then timings. Um, and timings you want to look for lower, lower the better. Voltage, it's important to note when you're setting the RAM to default settings in your BIOS, which we'll cover later, but this is a 1.65 volt. So just make sure to set it to whatever the manufacturer says and that will get it to run at stock settings, hopefully, if you have um, a stick that is working. And lastly, you have your size. In this case, six gigabytes. Um, kind of a lot for RAM. Uh, for those of you who know that you need more RAM than the rest of us, um, please don't listen to this, but uh, for the rest of you, um, I would highly urge you not to buy uh, more than four or six gigabytes depending on your chipset, simply because you're not going to use it. And um, like even if you're doing heavy gaming, heavy, uh, like if you're running one app at a time, then uh, you're definitely not going to need it. Uh, I don't care what game it is, but um, so that's just good good to keep in mind not to waste money on things you're never going to use. All right, so um, now that that's that, uh, I'm going to go over a little bit about how to select RAM for your own PC. So uh, what is channel? Um, there are dual channel and triple channel sets out there. I'm sure you heard you've heard these terms a lot. Um, Basically, the only chipset ever to use triple channel RAM was Intel's X58 chipset, the LGA1366 socket. And um, it's debatable whether this RAM is actually faster than dual channel or not. It's, um, it surely isn't like a 150% uh, performance increase. Um, so don't worry about that. Don't take that into selection when you're choosing parts for your... Um, I mean, don't take that into consideration when you're choosing parts for your PC. Um, and again, your motherboard will determine specifications um, for all the other parts that are compatible with it. So just make sure that whatever type of RAM you're getting is compatible with the motherboard. And also, if you look online to your motherboard manufacturer's website, most of them have a list of um, compatible RAM chips. and these are ones that are tested with it and are known to work. Not necessarily the complete list. Um, usually a lot of RAM will be left off and will work just fine with it, but these are ones that your manufacturer has tested and know for sure to work with it. So that's good to check out. And um, that list can usually be found in the motherboard manual as well. All right, so when you're buying RAM, um, there are a few things to take in consideration. Uh, first of all, um, the compatibility that's given. Um, second of all, you need to make sure uh, you're getting 
the highest frequency you can for your money <coughs> because um, that determines how fast your RAM is but again don't buy the really fast RAM that everyone says oh it's trash it doesn't run at correct settings and all this so make sure you've done your research read reviews things like that um, timings are nice if you're if you need another deciding factor like you have two um, RAM modules that uh, you're planning on getting but you don't know which one to get um, get the one with lower timings if they both have great reviews and high frequencies um, that'll make it slightly faster <coughs> and then another thing to um, figure it's not that important but can be a factor is the heat sink size these are really low profile modules as you can see um, the heat sink doesn't raise very high above the actual um, chip right there but some like Corsair's Dominator series can go up to like this high all the way across or um, G-Skill has some like that uh, Kingston HyperX, the new ones can be pretty high and that might interfere with your heat sink if your heat sink is too large so this is just another thing to keep in mind um, so you don't have any problems down the road alright so um, another thing to note is if you are used to the old tech of DDR1 um, you can no longer mix and match modules to your liking um, if you buy a kit of memory and you want to upgrade the size it has to be the same kit in order for it to um, take advantage of the full bandwidth otherwise you're just going to have a, a bunch of random memory modules and they won't be running at nearly their potential speed Alright guys, so I think that covers it. Uh, hopefully this guide has helped you um, to decide on what to buy. Oh, um, as for places to buy, um, please go to Newegg, <coughs> a great site. They have tons of people who have written reviews about all their products and um, it's a great place to do your research even if you're not going to buy from them. Go read what people have to say and um, it's a good place to find your inventory or like what's available online too and then once you find one that maybe you're interested in go do more extensive research on it google it put review after the, the model you're gonna find stuff read that stuff and um, then once you decide make sure to get the best price we like amazon.com because of the free shipping free um, no tax but whatever's uh, lowest for you is nice so get it there um, alright guys hope this helps um, and it is definitely more concise than the last one, so enjoy it and have fun building your custom PC, hardware hobby style.